Cool. Welcome to another episode with HypeSQ. My name is Simon. I'm here today with Ricky Hayes. He's a really an influencer in the dropshipping community, and we're trying to bring you content and value so, they, so that you can grow your own business. Thank you so much for joining, Ricky. For the people that don't know you, can you maybe briefly introduce yourself, what you do? Uh, yeah, so pleasure to be here first and foremost. Thank you for the opportunity. It's always an honor. Um, yeah, so I'm, uh, as you said, an influencer on YouTube myself, but mainly what I do is I'm the co-founder of Day Beautify. Many people seem to know that one now, but <laughs> uh, uh, so a lot of my time is spent on improving that product, which is basically for those who aren't aware, it's just a, a Shopify theme to try and help you build uh, a store quickly and easily. So at the end of the day, you can focus on marketing. And then I uh, also do digital marketing for various companies around the world as well as um, my own e-commerce brands as well. So between all of that, pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Uh, I mean, it was already uh, just a, a challenge to get it, to get you here on the show. So yeah, I'm, very I'm happy sorry. That you made the time. <laughs> nope, no, no problem. We're all dealing with our daily structure, structure, struggle. So don't worry about that. What does your typical day look like then? Oh, that's a great question. That's a good question. Um, so generally I wake up at about 6.30, 7 o'clock. Um, I like to wake up what I define as early. Um, I'm not much of a morning person, but I like to try and wake up early, um, take my, uh, go for a walk with my wife and my dog, um, usually sort of wakes me up and it's just a good way to get started the day. And then pretty much it's just all hands on deck, if I'm honest, between um, all the various companies. There's like most people, you yeah, always have your daily ad hoc work, um, but a lot of just trying to structure my companies and get them aligned for long-term growth and sustainability. So from pretty much about eight o'clock through to uh, generally about five o'clock, just nonstop work, obviously some little breaks in between. Um, but other than that, up until that time, it's just nonstop work for the day. Um, for me, that's generally seven days. Um, I just work way too much there. Then I'll usually go to, um, I like to go to gym, go to gym, have dinner, relax for a few hours with my wife and then I usually work a couple more hours and usually go to bed at about 12. So uh, usually that's that's my day in an ideal world, but I'll be honest, it's definitely <laughs> not not a perfect schedule. I mean, and I know running multiple businesses is very, very tough and you're being surprised every day with things that come on your path. So I fully understand. I must say I'm, I'm living in China for 10 years now and it's the work-life balance is gone. I mean, there's just a work-life <laughs> integration and I think that applies for everyone nowadays that that balance is off when you're working from home as well. So the work-life integration is you need to find your own balance to be able yeah. to, to make that work. And also yeah. have, have a spouse that uh, approves that. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're very lucky that we're men that have uh, wives that actually approve of this lifestyle. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not an easy lifestyle. Yeah. What I really like about you is that you, although you are running multiple businesses, you still practice what you preach. You're still very involved with doing drop shipping and and the day to day activities, which is really rare. What I see with influencers itself. Normally, they go big, they become an influencer or a coach, and that's their main business. But for you, you're still inside. Can you share a little bit more about your own drop shipping journey? Yeah, I mean, how many? I can't even remember how many years I've been sort of doing this now. Like it's been over three years. I can't believe how fast time goes by. Um, but so I pretty much started in about uh, late 2017 is when I heard about the term dropshipping. Like a lot of people, I uh, just learned about it from YouTube by trying to understand uh, more about it. Funnily enough, uh, as a bit of a story, I didn't. I was in a large. Uh, corporate bank here in Australia and uh, I, we had a work get together and I'm not very social but I decided to go to this <laughs> and um, funnily enough we're speaking to one of my colleagues who got well along with well and he was telling me about making money online and if I'm honest at that point I thought it's all just I thought it was a myth I thought it was just nothing more than just uh, an illusion nothing that people will say it but very no one's actually achieving it type of thing and he told me about print on demand at the time and uh, quite captivated me. And I started doing research, um, eventually heard about drop shipping, and I actually liked it even more than print on demand. And so pretty much just kept doing more research on that. Um, the, the first six months of my journey, I didn't get a single sale um, because I spent the first three months trying to make the perfect store, um, installing all these apps, changing all my settings and 
And I thought, oh, yeah, I can sell pencils. Yeah, I'll sell pencils. And so um, I tried selling pencils and then went to Facebook ads to try and promote it, of course, because I realized at that point, I've got this, I thought, great store and heaps of good pencils and stuff that no one's buying. And so I run ads and little to, did I know and learned very quickly that no one cared. And so, <laughs> um, so very much I remember using an image, just a basic image, thinking, oh, yeah, I'll just promote this and Facebook will just somehow make me a lot of money. And, and uh, very quickly within a few days realized, yeah, no one cares. And um, it sort of has been for me just sort of progressive from there about a, really to me a journey through failure. Um, and, uh, it wasn't the next three months. Then I got my first sale and, uh, that was the most, I still remember it very vividly. Couldn't believe I actually got someone to actually pull out his or her wallet. No, it was her, sorry, her wallet and, um, and actually buy something from me. And then from there, I just, uh, took the perspective of, okay, look, I can make this happen. And I knew that other people were making it happen. And so I just thought, look, I've already come this far. I want to make this successful. I can see that there is proof of concept. Um, I just need to keep failing and accepting that I'm going to fail, but each time learn more. And so progressively from there, made more stores. Like my first four stores all pretty much failed in terms of um, just failures. Then I got my first winner, which was a year later um, from when I started. Sorry. So a year later, so 2018 and... um, and it was, uh, I'm not sure if you may have seen it or whatever, but um, it was a baby gyro bowl. Like, have you seen that item by chance? The, uh, it's um, just basically a baby, a plastic BPA free baby bowl that gyrates. So when they have cereal and stuff in it, it doesn't just spill over. It's meant to sort of move yeah, with yeah. them. And uh, that, that made me 50K and in revenue. And it was at that point when I learned the first big one, it's like, I made 50K in revenue, but I lost money. How am I doing this oh, anyway? Wow. So, um, because I was spending too much on ads, and I didn't really know the importance of of um, managing my marketing. I just thought, oh, I'll spend more, I'll make more, and I wasn't focusing on profit at the end of the day. And so that was a big learning lesson. Yeah. Um, and then from there, I ended up closing that store because I thought, nah, look, blah blah blah, because it was just that one product, and. Uh, then found another product and that was when I hit my highest days that I've still been able to obtain to this date, which was again over a Christmas period um, selling kids toys and it uh, hit 87,000. And that was, that was where I started to get my gray hairs, um, <laughs> the most stressful days I've personally ever had. And then, then from there, um, basically uh, as well, that one that died out cause that was a Christmas store and Then from there, just really thought, I look, I'm kind of sick of this, uh, what feels like big spikes in terms of sales and then it dies out over months. So I very much have been focusing on the brand approach of really trying to focus on longevity of the customer. So that's sort of where I'm at now, if that makes sense. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I I recognize this journey. Most of our users of HyperSkill, they're either beginner or middle or very experienced. And the beginner is quite often trying to build the perfect store. (laughs) <laughs> because they think this is going to go well. And and normally it's already also a red flag for us just to say, okay, this is going to be a lot of work for us with probably limited return. Let's just start the conversation and gently advise them <laughs> to go a different path. Um, it's because it can be very disappointing. Of course, there are a few that do succeed and there, but the persistence, I mean, we see people stop after two months and your story shows a, you need persistence to be able to actually figure out your niche, your also your approach and, and how to run it more smoothly. So that's awesome. Yeah, well, I, I entirely agree. And like I look at it, I've always looked at it that I've personally never gone to university or college, whatever. But And I look at it that in the space that I could have gone to university or college, I've built all this business knowledge just by actually doing it. And so um I always say to people, you know, if you go to university and college, you generally have the perspective of that it's going to be two, three, four, however many years. Um, if you have that same perspective with drop shipping, and then then that you're basically getting yourself uh, some form of qualification degree that's going to informally allow you to build your own income over time, then um, then that will give you perspective for persistence. So that's always my perspective, anyway. 
So you're advising people not to go to university? Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying that either. <laughs> I've, I've, uh, the, um, I've, I'm just saying, well, if I'm honest, the marketing is one of those skills. Like, let's say if it was a, you would become a medical practitioner or anything in the mental health, mental uh, health field and all of that. University college is great. We're very lucky with digital marketing because of the name digital marketing. You can pretty much learn nearly all of those skills yeah. pretty comfortably just online. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think for some jobs, you definitely need a university to be able to yeah. get you in the, in, in the skills that you need. But like I studied economics. I think I can just take separate courses online now and get exactly the same knowledge in a much quicker time and uh, of what it can actually is practically applicable as well. So yeah, <laughs> that's... Uh, regarding your... You mentioned already uh, you had this Christmas store that was doing well, but it's temporarily... When you, when you look at the seasons, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, do you have different approaches on how to be- make most out of it? Well, yeah, naturally. like Because like, obviously it's dependent on factors on, let's say, which countries you're marketing to because different countries have different holidays. So yeah. the most important thing that I always say is that I mean, do some research on the mark company, uh, sorry, countries that you're marketing to and get a calendar of all their holidays. That's the most important one. Obviously, Christmas has universal pretty much holidays. And that's why it's also, you know, um, uh, an easy one for people to get a lot more sales. So for for me, how I look at every quarter is is that, that I look at what countries I'm marketing to, what their holidays or unique events are for me to then run various sales. Okay. And um, uh, is what I do. If I'm talking Q4, I'll just run sales nonstop pretty much because that's what everyone sort of does, especially around, you know, things like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, of course. Um, but that's generally sort of been my overarching strategy that I sort of look at. Um, and it's all very dependent on what country. So for instance, here in Australia, we have different public holidays to an extent to what you would have. And so um, I would just do some research, determine what those holidays are, and then build some sales campaigns. Generally, when I say that, I generally do email campaigns. So that's my my personal strategy in regards to that. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But I, I saw a video when you were discussing, because Q4 2020 was really hyped. Yeah. It's going to be the biggest ever. And I saw yeah, in yeah. the video that you also, like at some point, you had to stop your ads just ah, because yes. it was the biggest one, but supply chain was such a headache. Yes. Um, yeah, sorry, I probably went a bit off tap there. But the, um, so you're yeah, absolutely correct. So depending on the type of the time of year, obviously, as well, very much you have to consider your logistics, like what you just said there as well. Um, Q4 is obviously amazing, absolutely amazing for sales. It is absolutely headache for logistics. And um, the you know, there's nothing worse than not getting someone their Christmas present by Christmas. And one of the worst things with dropshipping that we all know is generally the shipping times historically um, can be, you know, two, four, six weeks, depending on varying factors. And so if you're dropshipping and you're trying to sell, you know, in the middle of December and you know you've got four weeks delivery time, and you know that the items are likely to be for Christmas, you're going to get a lot of headaches. So the um, so around Christmas, especially for dropshippers around November, generally um, in November, I will very much clamp down on making sure that I um, have stock if I do. And if I don't, I won't push heavily because I don't want my packages to arrive after Christmas because guaranteed what will happen is I'll either get a dispute I'll get a bad review. I'll get uh, a refund request. So around that time is when I generally recommend people to try and just evaluate what's best for their customer, not just for themselves. Yeah. January was full of refunds, I think, for a lot of... (laughs) Yeah, it always is. Yeah, it always is. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Let's go a little bit into Debutify because I I would like to know more about why you got started because you've been doing well as a dropshipper. How did you come up with the idea to start a company like Debutify? Well, it all sort of pretty much started from like the the funny thing with my story of the three months of building the perfect store and then to find out that no one cared, right? So (laughs) the... Um, so I, I've from that journey pretty much learned that the most important thing in drop shipping, especially is not having, uh, like spending months or weeks on the perfect store. 
It's having a store, having it set up, focusing on the product and the marketing. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the the product and the marketing, and I'm sure you see this all the time, is the most important part um, in that. Like you could have, I've just learned the hard way, you could have the best the, the best store, the best product in the world in its own category in your mind. But if no one knows about it, is it really the best? Okay. So um, I wanted to make something that allowed people to easily build a store, uh, get that done. That's done, dusted. Okay. Now I can just focus pretty much. I've got this product and I'm going to market it this way. And that's where um, uh, why I wanted to do it. So that if I wanted to build a store, I could just be like, okay, open a Shopify store. Here we go. Here's Dave Beautify. All right. I'm 99% set up. Now I focus on the marketing of selling this product because that's always what's the most important from my perspective. So that's pretty much how that idea came about. Yeah. And who are your main users then? Are they global? Are there certain countries that dominate or is it like medium-sized sellers? What kind of profile is it? Um, a lot of our profile are drop shippers. A lot of them are from the United States. Um, and so a lot of them are beginner, intermediate, too advanced. Um, so a lot of them are, are scaling quite high. Um, you know, a lot of drop shippers make a lot of money. Once you get to a point, they make some serious money. Um, and then uh, a number of business to business, like brand owners, I guess you could say. But a lot of uh, the vast majority of our customers are beginner intermediate to that sort of advanced stage. Yeah. Mm. You're based in Australia, but you also have a team then in the US who's managing these uh, accounts? Our teams around uh, the world, like, yeah, we do have some people from the United States, but our team's sort of situated from around the world. Yeah. So my business partner is from Canada, for instance, um, and a lot of my team, yeah, are in the United States, Canada, and various parts around the world. That's just sort of how we've structured our company in that regard. No, that makes sense that you work around the clock. Then. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> You already mentioned like it's not so much about the product. Uh, it is about the product for sure, but the, the majority is still the marketing uh, part. We also, when we get a question a lot from, can you just give me the best selling products? And actually we don't do that, first of all, because we don't want to give away the products that sell well for our customers <laughs> because we kind of just, um, it's a conflict of interest, I would say. The other one is if everyone starts selling the same thing, we will run into supply chain issues because the supplier cannot produce the quantity that suddenly uh, is needed or is in demand. So for that, to be able to, to do, we, we don't really advise on any products because in the end, it's we can give 10 products to different sellers or one product to 10 sellers and they will do it completely differently. One yeah. will succeed, others will just completely fail. So one of the key things in the end is social media and just the sell, the conversion, generating traffic. What would be your like best advice to be able to get that conversion uh, to the highest point? Oh, yeah, that's a, another good question. I love these. Um, so again, first and foremost, I'll just say, like I know I sound like a broken horse, but set up your store. Use something like Day Beautified. Just get that done. Don't worry about it being absolutely perfect. The definition of perfect is non-existent. So um, I, in order to get the conversions, um, personally, the marketing to me is the easy part of it, if you ask me, in terms of it's basically just here's an ad, here's the objective I want people to buy, Facebook, try and find me those people, okay? And that's sort of the... The most important part I actually say to people in to, to get conversions is the product. Um, one thing I found consistently time and time again is that the product is king. I see a lot of people just like myself trying to sell a pencil, thinking, oh, yeah, I'll just sell this. But no, the, the, the product is the, the foundation. The marketing comes from the product. And so... Um, the, for dropshippers, most of the successful items are pr- items that solve problems, okay? Items that uh, can accommodate someone's life and, and help improve it in some regard, okay? And I personally recommend products that stick to niches that are designed that are more tailored towards women. Statistically, in our niche, I've found that most of the buyers are, are women, so items that are designed for that. The best niches I personally find is like kitchen homewares, I guess, um, pets, jewelry is one where it's not really a need, but it sells very, very well. Um, cosmetics, beauty, I guess, and, um, and baby items. And so I use that and try and find items that uh, have mass appeal in those spaces. 
to that solve problems to the yeah. ideal customer. Um, and uh, then, then basically, once I found that, then I'll obviously focus on the marketing, like what you said. So, very much make sure that uh, what you said as well, like with um, having ten people market the same product, they'll they'll have different approaches. That's when the marketing comes into play about um, how you convince someone that your product or your offer is the offer for them. And so that's sort of, that's my approach anyway. Yeah. And we, what I see that a lot of our customers are using Facebook, Facebook ads, yes. but they run into yep. so many issues to be by getting blocked or banned. Yeah. Yep. Do you have any advice for them on how to prevent that or how to deal with that? Yeah, it's it's just an unfortunate reality now with Facebook now with locking down and all of that. Um, it one um, try not to uh, where you can mislead customers. The uh, most importantly, you know, don't don't be deceptive in your marketing. That's that's uh, the most important part. Don't say that if you've got if you've actually got six weeks delivery times that it's going to be two days. You know that that's immediately going to get you into hot water, just little things like that. Um, two, you know, like like what sort of you offer and that as well, um, try and use services that help improve your shipping times and, and quality of product because that's very important now. We, we can't just run a Facebook ad now and just it convert and make a lot of money. There's a lot more expectation from the customer. Um, and... Personally, I getting a bit off topic, but that's what I like to do, right? The, um, <laughs> is I also say diversify your traffic. So what I mean by that is don't just rely on Facebook. There's other platforms out there as well. Pinterest, influencer marketing, Google ads, so on and so forth. So that's my general advice on that. Mm. I hope that helps. Yeah, I think for sure. And then creating maybe different accounts to run your ads with to be and able that to. Too, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would definitely, I think, for for a lot of people, even if it's your mom's account or whatever, will make it ha- make yeah. it work. Because yeah. that's that's the main deal breaker. You have a winning product, and then suddenly something ha- happens, uh, and then uh, get blocked. Go, sales go to nothing. Yeah, yeah. So. It's it's very uh, really painful to see. I think because uh, for for me to see someone do really well, and then suddenly I get so. Ah, it's like I don't know what to do. <laughs> What's happening? Why am I? Why is it happening to me? I didn't do anything wrong, and it's, it's I'm just trying to chase my dream. So it's very unfortunate to see that happen as well. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, definitely. We got we got to do de- I I understood there's like a new theme 3.0. What is uh what is the up update or upgrade or for this new version? Yeah, so a lot, if I'm honest, and I don't like to, I don't want to bore you too much with all the absolute specifics, but basically it's um, a complete overhaul of the back end, you know, just to try and make it more clear. The, the, the main benefits from a customer perspective at the end of the day is that uh, I really wanted to make it as fast as possible, integrated, more integrated with more granular controls. Um, in terms of a lot of our controls were a bit too broad where, for instance, um, various settings would apply store-wide. Let's say um, you might have 50 products on your store with different shipping times. We had one setting that would apply to all products, but no, that's not relevant. Some people might have very fast shipping, very slow, just little, uh, a lot of things like that. And we need to sort of really restructure it. And as well as that, give it a nice uplift as to how it presents um, to help with conversion rates. So, that's, I don't want to get too technical because I get a bit too technical, don't I? But, um, <laughs> so that, that's sort of it. And then the most important thing with this update is now we can roll out more updates more consistently so that people are constantly getting uh, new updates, support and benefits to help them stay ahead of the curve because that's really important because dropshipping is just so uh, competitive now. <clears throat> yeah. Besides using the Beautify app in the Shopify app store, what other apps would you recommend? Uh, well, personally, like the few most important that I generally do is like SMS remarketing apps, um, just for remarketing for one, um, email remarketing too. So I, I personally, they're all much of a muchness, but I just use Clavio for email marketing. You want to use something like Hyperskew, you know, to help with your actual fulfillment. Um, it works, you know, cause at the end of the day, if you get these orders, you need some service to help you fulfill it. Right. Yeah. So um, that as well as um, I just use personally SMS bump. Those are probably the 
the main ones you would need to really get started. Because if you're using something like Debutify, it really does that 99% of the work for the front end. And then you just have a few apps for the back end, focus on the marketing. That's my perspective anyway. And for tracking, what, what are you using for tracking? Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, I don't know how I forgot that one. Anyway, um, I'm used to doing it in a slightly different way. But the, um, personally, I've used a lot of, well, a lot of the app providers provide it as well that I use, um, have used Aftership just because I like the nice tracking page it provides. Yeah, they're nice. But, they're very nice. Yeah, it is. And uh, it's free. So like for a lot of people, it, you can get that started, simply add it to your website. It's very easy. We've actually uh, just, funnily enough, just gotten some integration with that. So it nicely integrates when you actually um, nice. set up Aftership and stuff too, because it, it is a really good app and you can, it's, it's infinitely scalable. So yeah. that's what I like about it. Awesome, awesome. Regarding, um, yeah, I, I know that you guys started this kind of dropshipping council. Uh, I think Camille is in there, Camille Sata and Peter, Peter Pru, and then you. I think Shushi and Nigam is also in there. What is this all about, this dropshipping uh, council? Yeah, well, I can't take full credit for like the original idea. The original idea is uh, Shisha. I apologize if I've said that wrong. He's a fantastic guy. Um, the idea of it essentially is to bring a lot of uh, successful uh, entrepreneurs or dropshippers in their space um, into one place so that people can continue scaling their business as well as that help beginners go uh, com from a complete beginner to learning the skills of what it's required from those who have done it successfully um, and learn from their mistakes, learn from their their failures and their successes to help them. So that at the end of the day, that's sort of what that's about and bring a lot of people from not just drop shipping, but um, people that support drop shipping, you know, like companies like yours that support people on the back end, um, email marketing agencies, just um, video editing agencies, people that support drop shippers to help facilitate their journey. So very much just sort of bringing all those minds together. Pardon me so that people can um, have uh, a, a resource, I guess, of, uh, of people that have gone through it so that their difficulty of barrier of entry is less at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, I watched a few episodes. It's really awesome. I think it's very useful to check out uh, Dropshipping Council. You have some regular, I think, quarterly uh, meetings as well that are on YouTube for people to watch. So uh, a lot of nuggets that are useful for dropshippers too. I would I'd love to be part of it. If there's an opening, uh, let me know. It will be very yeah, cool. that Yeah, absolutely. Like always open to more people. Um, um, I'll definitely get you involved. Like, as I like, the more that we can have there, the more people um, have choice and the, the more people can actually um, utilize these to, to help them grow their business. There's awesome. uh, absolutely, definitely do that straight after this. Yeah, cool. The, the dropshipping council, that's, that will be awesome. Uh, we will definitely talk about that a little bit more. So what's next then for you and the dropshipping community? What is, what is the big dream or what's the next steps that you want to pursue? Oh, uh, another good question. I love these questions. Um, so for me now, now that um, Day Beautify is well established um, in the community and um, uh, we've improved a lot internally. It's been a lot of a big learning curve for me, managing developers and all of that, even though I'm more a marketer, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a scummy marketer, right? The, um, the <laughs> is uh, now I really want to bring all these tools together. So what I mean is like with um, Day Beautify, you know, working with more with people like yourself and others to bring that together, like the dropshipping council so that people can uh, really just focus on getting their store set up as if as if uh, an absolute professional has set it up um, in minutes so they can just focus on market. So that's one of my big, big aspirations um, and that's slowly coming together. Um, two, uh, for me in the dropshipping space, I would love to try and get some more rhythm back into doing some YouTube videos for me. I just never seem to get the time. Um, so that is a big dream as sad as that is. But most importantly... Um, for me, I just like, uh, I, I want to keep pushing my own other e-commerce businesses and that higher because what I love is the more I can push myself higher and that obviously the more I learn, I find that personally gratifying, the, yeah. the more I can pass that on to people. And I, that's where I really like to do it, where I can, 
uh, fail a thousand times, learn those couple of successes and pass those successes on to others so that then they don't have to repeat it. So that that's my, if I'm honest, big aspiration. It sounds a bit corny, but that's sort of the truth. Uh, I mean, I remember a very famous quote from, uh, I heard Tony Robbins, maybe you're familiar with him. He said, progress is happiness. And that's in the end what we always want to see for ourselves. But also if you're running a team and running a company or a business, they also want to see themselves progressing somewhere <laughs> and yeah. that will keep them excited and, and, and everyone can grow uh, together. And it also is, you're, you're never there, right? You never arrive. You just, you're always progressing because you reach a goal and then you want to go to the next. So it's always a continuous uh, journey. Yeah. Uh, at least that's the battle uh, we, we have to fight. Yeah. I, I always think of the, when I think of that, I think of like a road as like a road that never ends. You, you know, you're always sort of moving yeah. forward and uh continually moving forward but the road will just never end and as much as we all sort of want that end point where it's like when does this stop the reality in business is it'll just never stop that's just business <laughs> yeah and i think that's a good key message also for uh, drop shippers or any entrepreneur doing whatever they're doing when you once you failed it might be a beginning of something new and that beginning would have not been there if you haven't failed so it is never it's never a bad thing to try something and then find out it's not for you or it didn't work. It's just yeah. an, a new a new a layer you build up to be able to get closer to what will work for you. So I think that's, exactly. and then you will see, you can be just like Ricky and multi, running multiple businesses at the same time, serving the community. Hopefully not with the gray hairs. <laughs> I think that's, that's hard to prevent though. I think I have over the years now. <laughs> I don't know what's the secret. Maybe that's a great new dropshipping product. To be able to avoid aging or something. Yeah, yeah. There we go. I've just we've just found a new market. There we go. <laughs> uh, we, we're gonna we, we're gonna go past the hundred years. So I think we're gonna get all great eventually. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for for being here. Uh, I, I really love talking to you and uh, keep doing what you're doing because it's really amazing and inspiring. No, it's it's a pleasure, and uh, I feel it's a real honor to be part of these interviews, to be able to contribute back to the community, if you ask me, um, I feel very lucky. Um, I always like to just sort of add at the end um, to me that, you know, for people who are watching this, regardless of where you're at in your journey, um, just be proud of yourself. You know, the one of the things that I've learned is, like I've said through this, is uh, success is paved through failure. So the... I, I see this a lot and it, it's sad to see so much talent and so much opportunity, unfortunately, is never fulfilled because a lot of people get um, demotivated and, and, uh, and, and quit, I guess. And I always like to just say to people, you know, just don't quit. Don't, don't be too worried about where other people are at in their journey. Okay. Mm -hmm. Life, life, um, life has a funny way of figuring itself out as, as funny and broad as that sounds. And I always just like to say to people, you know, be proud one of the things that I've learned about going into this that I'm the most proud of is I'm proud of not uh, becoming the best in the world, but more the fact that I actually have done it. And uh, in terms of push myself, it is a very difficult journey. Business is very difficult, but the more difficult something is, the more worthwhile it is to obtain. And um, so, you know, always look at that your past failings, whatever you define as a failing, is all building up to your successes. And so, you know, I just um, I just always like to say to people that they should always be proud of themselves because even if you're not physically the most successful person in the room, as long as you can say that you've learnt a lot of different things that you never would have otherwise learnt, then that is a success uh, to me. Mm -hmm. And so I always just like to add that in, as corny as that is. Uh, and that's, a, that's amazing because I, 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 maybe you can add one thing is that the most difficult I, I did ask many people the question as well like what are you most proud of whenever i do an interview what is the question asked, what are you most proud of and normally it was the hardest part they overcame was what they're most proud of so whenever you feel like you're in rock bottom this is the time you're gonna look back up at feeling like the most proud of once you get once you're older and that you have overcame that and went on to to be a better version of what you are so um that that will be very cool as well yeah awesome i put, couldn't agree more um i i look at for me i've had like anyone very dark times where if i'm honest i contemplated is this for me and um 
fortunately, you know, that's where as well, having a really supportive network of people around you yeah. um, is really important. I've been very lucky that my wife's always been very supportive of me. And um, the to have that support is, uh, you can't put a value on it. You can't put anything on it, unfortunately. And um, however, it is incredibly invaluable. So, you know, it is important that you go into this with people around you that are going to support you, not put you down for trying to pursue something that may not be normal or mainstream. Uh, have people that just accept you for who you are. And I feel that to me is what's allowed me to uh, get through dark times, which happens. For everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vicky. No Take worries. Care. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. Take care. All right. Bye.